great investigative journalist really left, Peter Schweitzer. How are you, my friend? Uh, it's great to be with you, Mark, as always. Thanks so much for having me. Well, Peter, you spent time with uh, Tony Bobulinski. Tell everybody who he is. He's an extremely credible person. I have a friend who's very close to him and says he's a really rock-solid stand-up guy. Was that your impression? Yes, absolutely. I spent about four and a half hours with him. Um, he's really not political, Mark. Um, he's a former uh, Navy officer. He was in the um, nuclear program with the Navy, went into private equity. Um, his only real uh, political involvement was he gave uh, you know, some campaign contributions 10, 15 years ago to Democrats. Mm -hmm. um, so this is not somebody who, you know, is politically motivated. Um, and he was brought in uh, to do some deals with the Biden family uh, and China. And what's interesting here is the timeline, Mark. The, the, the discussion starts on Christmas Eve of 2015. That's important because, of course, Joe Biden is still vice president of the United States. And that's when Tony is first contacted by another Biden associate saying, I'm putting together a deal with a prominent American family, which the chain reveals is the Bidens. Um, do, uh, we are doing deals overseas. Uh, and there's a great level of detail in the communications that he has now turned over to the U.S. Senate. I've seen some of them, but they're very explicit in a couple of things, Mark. Number one, these are not Hunter Biden deals. The Chinese are very explicit that these are Biden family deals. And that's an important distinction. The second thing that it shows, Mark, is that these uh, deals involve discussions with Joe Biden. Uh, Hunter Biden uses code. He'll say, I need to talk to my chairman. Uh, Tony hears from another colleague. He says, well, who's the chairman? He says, that's his dad. Um, so his dad is involved in these discussions. Um, and then you actually have the transfer of money. Uh, there is uh, a Chinese energy company called CEFC. It's tied to the Chinese military. And you actually have communications where um, there is a deal cut. CEFC is going to put $10 million into this LLC. This is an LLC Tony is, is running. $5 million of that $10 million is a um, forgivable, not secured, five million dollar loan from the chinese to the biden family and the senate report confirms they didn't know what it was but confirms that that five million dollars did make its way to the Bidens. when you consider five million made it to the biden's and he gets uh hunter three and a half million from the widow of the ex mayor of moscow and he's got other chinese deals going uh $1.5 billion, where he makes a percentage interest as, as one of the facilitators, and on and on. It sounds to me like Hunter Biden, first of all, made millions and millions of dollars off these foreign companies that have ties, in many cases, to these corrupt or communist governments. Uh, and that's number one. Is that, is, that, yeah. is that right? Now, number two... Yeah. When his father says, Joe Biden, with respect to Ukraine, he says broadly, I don't, I'm not involved in his business dealings. I'm doing this uh, off the top of my head. I don't know anything about them. That simply isn't possible anymore, is it? It's not. It's not. Uh, first of all, you know, Joe Biden's blanket statement that I have never discussed with my family their business dealings, Hunter Biden himself has contradicted that. He said he talked to his dad about Burisma. Um, we know that when he said, I've never you know, had any interactions with her business partners, we know that on that trip that they took on Air Force Two to Beijing, China, that you and I have discussed before, that Hunter Biden introduced his business partners to his father on that trip. The Chinese executives have said that that happened. Now you have these emails showing um, that this is not a Hunter Biden going rogue kind of venture. Um, this is a Biden family enterprise. That $5 million loan, for example, it's not to Hunter, it's to the Biden family. That's what the communications show. So you are exactly right. And the question that we have always asked is, you know, what is the Biden family selling when they are collecting this money? They, they don't have skills. They don't have 
a product, they don't have services, what are they selling? And they are selling Joe Biden's position as power and power as vice president of the United States. That is what is up uh, for sale. And Joe Biden has always been soft on communist China. Joe Biden early on, uh, when Donald Trump was pressing uh, communist China on the military front, on the geopolitical front, or the economic front, the trade front and all, uh, his comment was, you know, uh, come on, uh, we, we can eat their lunch. You know, it's just not a big deal. Remember? Yes, that's right. He's been consistent on that. And then think about this. I mean, think about the timing on this market. So in 2017, that's when this, this $5 million is transferred from the Chinese. And, of course, there may be other deals that we don't know about yet. But that money's being transferred. Hunter's got his deal with the, the, the $1.5 billion private equity deal. Joe Biden at that time in 2017 is setting up the Biden Center at the University of Pennsylvania. If you look at the Biden Center when it was set up, they have a section on, you know, American foreign policy and diplomacy. They lay out three threats to America, the Joe Biden Center. Not one of them is China. They mention Russia. They mention climate change. And they they mention terrorism. No mention of China as a threat to the United States. So you have this parallel situation where they are quite literally getting money from Chinese entities linked to the Chinese military. And at the same time, the Biden Center at the University of Pennsylvania is saying, here are the threats that America faces today, and China is not among them. It's, it's really quite astonishing. And what else is astonishing is that the American media, the Praetorian Guard, the vast majority of the American media won't touch this story despite the fact we have names, we have witnesses, we have emails, we have dates, we have times, we have texts, we have photos. Uh, the Biden campaign hasn't denied anything. They haven't denied that uh, that's Hunter's computer. They haven't denied that Hunter went into that store. They haven't denied that that's his signature on the invoice. They haven't denied uh, that uh, his lawyer called asking for the computer back. They haven't denied any of it, have they? No, no. And, 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 you know, look, Mark, you and I, one of the first interviews I gave in January of 2018 was on my book, Secret Empires, where we first talked about the Bidens and their relationship with the mm. Chinese. The first thing that the Bidens said was, it's not true. Those deals didn't happen. Then when we demonstrated again and again that the deals had happened, the position shift shifted. Uh, and that was that this had no effect on, on Joe Biden's policies. When we demonstrated that Joe, Joe Biden's policies favored the Chinese and the Ukrainians and these other foreign interests, then they shifted and said, I never discussed my business dealings um, with my family. Now that that has, has been proven to be a lie, they have shifted further and they said, well, I did not participate in any of those deals. What Tony has brought to the table today is that, yes, in fact, indeed, you did participate on these deals. So they have shifted the, the yardstick every single way. In each and every instance, uh, they have been deceptive and they have lied. And they are now at a point where they need to answer this question, and Joe Biden needs to stand before the American people and answer these questions and be pressed uh, he's, on He's them. not going to? He's not going to be pressed if it comes up tonight? It'll come out in, up in a very nebulous way by this uh, partisan moderator. If if it's pressed, it'll be pressed by the president. And the problem with that is, if you're if you're Ernie Grabowski out there and you're not really paying attention to all this, and you see the president's hammering away, and Joe Biden says, "That's a smear. Leave my son alone. That's a lie." That's what you're left with. Yeah, and this is where the the, the negligence of the media is astonishing. I mean, you you know as well as I do. There are some great reporters out there. Yeah, but not the many. In, yeah, but the, the manner in which these major news outlets are being run today, uh, it, it is astonishing. Um, this is a story that has been brewing out there. And dare I say, if the name were changed and this were the Trumps rather than the Bidens, they'd be covering it. And, and, and more power to them. They should be covering it. But it's not the Trumps. It's the Bidens. And yet a complete lack of coverage, a complete lack of curiosity about any of it. Um, and, and I just hope that the American people get to hear the facts, they can see what the facts are, and they can evaluate it for themselves. And the only way they're going to get that 
is by going to media sources like you, reading the books and reading the articles, because the major publications are not going to touch. You know, Tony Bobulinski, he's out there. He's willing to talk. How hard was he to find for you? Uh, he actually uh, reached – there was an intermediary, intermediary that reached out to me, mm -hmm. and they wanted us to meet because we had done so much work on this early on. And, and honestly, I was skeptical at first, Mark, because, you know, you get people all the time that come to you, but – What's impressive about him was he did not oversell. You know, he didn't say, I've got the goods. It was, here's what I know. He showed me his devices, so I actually saw the text messages and communications from James Biden and from Hunter Biden. I took the phone numbers down. I confirmed that those were actually their phone numbers. Um, and the fact that he was not political. This is, this is for him a matter and, of And he's law. now given this information to the United States Senate. That's correct, to Senator Johnson's committee. Yeah, and the Democrats want nothing to do with it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Nothing, nothing to see here. We don't even want to. We don't even want to look at it. Uh, here's what. Here's really what worries me, Peter. As I say, that this will not be properly framed at tonight's debate. The president of the United States will have to frame it and explain it as he's debating against two people. That's a heavy lift. And on top of that, God forbid, and I mean it, if this man's elected president of the United States. He's not going to be able to withstand scrutiny. Forget about the New York Times and the Washington Post and CNN and MSNBC and all of them. At some point, at some point, some investigation is going to occur. He will not be able to withstand scrutiny. We're going to have a serious problem with an elected president of the United States. Oh, well, I think you're right, and I think the, the, you know, the questions and the hints about him not serving a full term because Kamala Harris uh, will take his position, I think uh, the percentage of that happening becomes even higher uh, when you're talking about uh, these investigations. Look, I, I think you're right. The challenge uh, with a debate or with a discussion is these are simple stories in the sense that, that it, it, it's pretty basic, right? These foreign powers, uh, the Chinese government, Ukrainian oligarchs, Russian oligarchs, want favors from Joe Biden. They're paying his family. That's simple. But it's kind of complex because you've got these, you know, these complex foreign names. You've got these acronyms. You've got these bank accounts. You've got ways in which they try to hide it. That's why the fact that the media has not sort of laid the groundwork to explain to people what they're talking about um, is, is, is just negligence of the highest order. And apparently there is an FBI investigation into this laptop over possible money laundering. Money yes, laundering. That's right. now th yeah, that's go ahead. Right. I'm sorry. No, and I was going to say, Mark, I don't know much about that other than what I've reported, but that's right. And, you know, the issue has always been with Hunter Biden, his payment from the Ukrainians, um, for example, his payment from other entities overseas. This comes straight from Senator Johnson's report. The reason we know about those is because a lot of the transactions, a lot of the foreign money flowing into Hunter Biden uh, became the subject of so-called SARS reports, suspicious activity reports. Let, let me read this to you before we run out of time in the, in the audience. Multiple federal law enforcement officials, this is Fox reporting, and Fox is really the only one in the, in the New York uh, Post and, and outlets like this, mine. One of the documents obtained by, well, no, multiple federal law enforcement officials as well as two separate government officials confirmed the authenticity of these documents, which were signed by FBI Special Agent Joshua Wilson, that's subpoenas. Wilson did not immediately respond to Fox News' request for comment. One of the documents obtained by Fox News was signed by an FBI receipt for property form, which details the Bureau's interactions with John Paul Mac Isaac, the owner of that Mac repair shop, who reported the, reported the laptop's contents to authorities. And so the uh, document has a case ID number. According to multiple officials, the FBI web, website 272 is the Bureau's classification for money laundering, while 272D refers to money laundering unknown uh, specified unlawful activity white-collar crime program, according to the FBI documents. One government official described 272D as a transnational or blanket coding. BA indicates the case was open to the FBI's, Bal FBI's Baltimore field offices. Um, sources say. So they may be looking at all this money coming in. You know, Joe Biden keeps saying, look at my tax returns. Look at my tax returns. I guess they're trying to see 
and maybe I'm going a bridge too far, but I'm just guessing. I, maybe they're trying to see if this money was laundered some way and hidden some way. Well, I, I think you're right. I think the reason you get a SARS report, a suspicious activity report from the Treasury Department, is that that the flow of money is unusual and the source of that money. I mean, remember, Yelena Batarina, who's, who's the oh, Russian yeah. oligarch who sent three and a half million dollars. She's been re- linked to Russian organized crime by the 30 U.S. Seconds. Department. Yeah. And so that's the problem. It, it, there's no question the money laundering, the flow of money from suspicious foreign sources to Hunter Biden should absolutely be the subject of investigation, and I'm sure Peter, it is right now. Peter, I want to thank you. You're a national treasure, and, uh, and God bless you, my friend. Thank you. It's always great to be on with you, Mark. Thanks so much. Absolutely shocking that the rest of the media isn't even looking into this. In fact, they're covering up. More on that when we return. Mark. 